to you, uh, recapping the greatest moments of the Schmodown season seven, the new era. Been a great season. I had a great time doing this show with you yesterday. This was so it was much fun. So Going much fun. I mean, I I know I'm not guy, but I feel like I feel like I give off a very similar essence. <laughs> the female guy essence okay yeah all it's right that, it's I, that, it looks like that big d energy right <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone um, in the chat oh it's yeah, fantastic it? it's uh well? you know like we were talking about before we logged on it's been a lot of streaming a lot of streaming i did my oh, full show sorry. sweet break this morning and then we're doing this and then i've got to go straight from here to my studio that i've built to shoot something for a uh, road to double or nothing. So for AEW. So it's, uh, Very cool. yeah, it's a lot. My, uh, <laughs> my day was, was, uh, I, I had to watch edge of tomorrow. Cause that movie's amazing. And I was doing a review of it today. I had to do I did a one-on-one -on -one interview with Chloe Dykstra. Uh, if you Fun. Guys, maybe remember her, she's great. Um, which is cool. That's coming out on nerds and suits in a couple weeks. Then I did, uh, an episode of greatest movie ever made on edge of tomorrow. And now we're here. So it's like three o'clock to eight 30, just straight through, and it's just I'm surprised uh, you can even speak right now, honestly. I know, dude. I mean, it's we I live in this corner of my apartment. This is where I live. I live <laughs> at, this, at this desk with this mic, and that's all I got. So um, but anyway, we are we are here to talk about Schmodown. It's it is season seven. We're around the corner for big tournaments happening here on Twitch. You guys are gonna be able to watch an upcoming hey, Star Wars girl. tournament that is uh just only gonna be exclusive to Twitch. So there'll be eight mm -hmm. Star Wars players going. Head to head, there's an inner geekdom tournament that's gonna be on YouTube. 16 people, all the brackets are up now. You guys can go check those out of the Facebook group. And uh, there's a slew of Patreon matches, ex exhibitions that are up now. There's the Champions match. There's there's Jurassic Park new releases. Go join Patreon.com/slash the Schmodown. You get access to all those matches. Um, it's been an exciting year so far. Yeah, and I feel like we've done a pretty good job of pivoting during this whole time. Luckily, you know, we we film a lot of things in advance, so we had quite a bit in the can. But even then, Christian and Mark and the whole crew and everyone's kind of banded together to be able to still put out quality content for you guys while we're in the current status we're in. Totally. It's amazing. It's amazing trying to pull it together and keep that content coming out. Obviously we're all, we're all getting in front of the camera, adjusting our lights. Jen, you and I are not that different of colored people at the moment, but look at this. I look like I'm a dead person. I look like I'm actually in the movie twilight. And you I mean, like I kind of am digging it. Like, I mean, I'm just waiting for you to whip out your superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> sparkling in the sun oh um, you really are that's why you were complaining <laughs> about your hair you were complaining about your hair before the show started and i'm like no just embrace that inner robert pattinson right now it's getting so it's getting so long but i uh yeah this is all makeup and bronzer so don't don't feel too bad <laughs> i'll make sure i'll make sure to go get some bronzer when this is over um so guys yesterday we covered some of the highlights of the season we uh we opened up with uh roca doing the fourth round draft speech we talked a little bit about uh, my match versus dan we talked mm -hmm. about um a bunch of other cool stuff the debut of the barbarian it's all i think it's up as a replay you can watch on twitch now and if you're watching along with us live or you're catching this on replay be sure to follow along um to, uh, you know it, it costs you nothing to follow that's what i'm saying right follow i am I'm, i should know this by now i've said it more than yeah. one time yeah that's what you do on twitch you follow subscribe um, subscribe yes. no no i think following is like subscribing right i don't following is subscribing gosh yes <laughs> the schmodown community is a bunch of boomers when it comes to twitch following is subscribing <laughs> to, to twitch guys just follow the channel let's get to 4k so christian will do his thing watch along uh, and we can we can never talk about following again so get follow off the my channel. lawn get off follow my lawn channel, you got right uh, um <laughs> uh some comments in the chat here we got uh ferris muthana Bateman, your blazer sucks. Thanks a lot, Whiskers. I appreciate that. Hey, um, at least this one fits. So yeah, there's that. This one, yeah. Oh, did you I, went did through I... a you went through a phase where you got really buff and none of your clothes fit. And I feel like we were ready to have an intervention before you. But like we were afraid that like if you got any buffer, you were gonna literally Hulk out of your jacket. Then there was a well. Okay, you're forgetting, Jen. There was two phases. If you guys go watch the spectacular when I get tackled through a table in 2018, I had gotten a little heavy set. The jacket was not fitting so well anymore. Oh, I, I thought that was I thought that was muscle. Oh, no, no, no. You're talking about later when I lost a bunch of weight. Uh, and the, there's there's that picture that people posted in the Facebook group where I'm talking to Roxy and my shirt's literally about to bust open. It's like oh. it's like yanking open. Um, was that fluffy or muscle? 
that was a that was a muscle look and then and okay then now neither one's going on so the <laughs> again. look i don't know how people people are posting pictures of them with abs and i'm just like i have one ab left like i've watched them slowly fade away you know during this whole thing 100 <laughs> percent. so guys go check out that first replay when we're done with this one it was a super yeah, it was a lot show. of fun we're picking up today where we kind of left off um so we're going to queue up the first match here uh this is we were going mostly chronologically uh it was kind of what we were doing for the most part um goddard what uh sorry what is this match we're watching right now i know i gave you the list but i'm trying to remember it's uh talking. corruption versus the family this is when mcweeny re- uh announces his retirement this, so right. this is after the match uh the family just lost so this incidentally was filmed the last this was the last match that got filmed Ben, get your day. comments off my face no one's here to look at that <laughs> <laughs> staring at your skull with my profile picture i'm like <laughs> anyways sorry. um so so this was the last day of filming this was on i think the 6th of march or whatever it was was when this was filmed it broadcast live this was the throwdown we didn't get another filming day after this i flew Gosh. back in from portland this morning i showed up i missed this match i actually managed to watch this match jen streaming live using airplane wi-fi which is unfathomable that's, that somehow that happened insane that's insane. I, I, I you're, I'm lucky I can just get like Wi-Fi on planes half the time. Um, not to sound like I'm complaining, but I'm surprised that you did that flight. I've done that before, like flown in the morning of where you're like, yeah. and you have to be there for the first match. And for me, I have to be in full makeup. So, God, I think I got up at like 5 a.m. that morning. Yeah, I was disappointed. That was, it was intense. It was an intense day. I was disappointed to miss this one live. You know, this match is significant for a couple of reasons. The first of which is, you know, or- Corruption loses the title in Orlando back in October. Cor- and uh, the family is climbing the ranks. And at this moment, the family's done very well for themselves. They they beat mm-hmm. my team. They beat Who's the Boss in the third round. They ended up losing to Shazam. But this is their moment to shine, right? This is the comeback. They're going to they're gonna win against Corruption. And then they're going to get their shot against Founding Fathers. And what ends up happening is... They lose. They lose. It's a it's a very close match. Andrew Guys plays better than Mike Kalinowski in this match. People didn't see that coming. Chance does very well. But the match ends. And while we had seen Guy retire, um, you know, last season, towards the end of the season, we get an unexpected moment here, which we're gonna we're gonna watch. Yeah, I do want to add that that guy retired when they lost to Shazam, and then they came back after the draft, and now Drew is about to do this. Yeah. Actually, more a little bit of chaos. There's still a lot of fight going on back here. Because oh, he's got he's got that sweet wings tie, whatever the hell you call that thing. So good. You're saying is it like a bolo yeah. tie? Sort I don't know. Comes here, not they they played lights out. Chance carried his teammate once again, which was beautiful to see. You know, <laughs> really well. For Watch them. McQueenie's face here. You know that that just happened. Spinner's choice. Mike's got a, a hell of a spin there. Uh, the Coens wrote Bridges Spies. And um, they also wrote Unbroken. I guess they said the year. I don't know. I guess we're trying to confirm that, which is why I walked in the interview. Either way, uh, it's that's a, that's a bad question to be written and, and like bad multiple choice. Like I understand what you're trying to do there, and it's just not the way that you played. I understand. Got to concur with him because unless I mean I know that the year was written, but so I thought the same thing standing backstage. Hmm. Uh, we thought about it. That's what we were talking about. We both knew a serious man right off the bat. And uh, that's what we spent the first 10 seconds of that question debating. Um, you know, uh, Janine came out with us today and she did a great job. And it was really nice to have her here. And this is such a huge match for you to come out and basically pinch it for Sam Levine. Yes, I was honored for them to ask me to take place and support them in this way. I'm so proud of how they played. They played an amazing game. It just shows how luck plays a huge factor in this game. So. Drew McQueenie. Amazing performance as usual, but I can tell you are absolutely beat up over this. I wouldn't say I'm beat up over it. I, I'm just, I've reached a point where I, I've realized something. Um, you know, I, I was uh, I was promised a lot of stuff by a lot of people. And, uh, and, we're, and we're still going to do it. Yeah. We're still, we're still going to get those belts. You see right now, this is a game that we lost just based off luck. And we're still here, baby. The family is still here. We're 6-2. and two. We've lost to the Shazam and ex-champion. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Yeah. I think I'd feel better if my manager had shown up and uh, I feel in general like um, like maybe, just maybe, you guys can do this by yourselves. Oh. I think I'm retired, folks. Have a good day. What just happened? Hold on. Drew! 
<laughs> my, oh my, oh my, how the tables have been. Him with the lollipop. I don't know what he's doing. He's nice up here. Yet. Can't win matches. Can't win as a manager. But maybe Ooh. need help bringing out the wheel next time. Uh, but, Guy, I seem to remember a very similar situation just a couple short years ago when I was up here. You're making fun of me because it broke down. I was a man showing his emotions and tearing up at the law with people I love. <laughs> That's one of the best comments. <laughs> and now here you are in that same situation, and I don't want to laugh, but, you know, I'm sorry. Uh, you know what, my friend? You and I have done a little dance for a little while now. Bands kind of want us coming at this. You've been coming out there with your cane and your top hat, and, uh, you know, I think it's about time you and I uh, stepped onto that little dance floor and did the little cha-cha together, my friend. And I know quite the ring, especially a ring down in Houston, April 25th. Oh. You and me, my friend, Mr. Booker T. How about you make that happen, Harlock? Plumber watching us back <laughs> now. Put him in his place and show you guys who the real lovable champion of this league is. What do you say, my friend? What do you say, Hanson? What do you say? Hey, man. I know that what happened was rough and... And I'm, I'm sorry for what I sent you down that path. You know, what happened with you and your old team and, and you know, where you are now. And and I see what you're doing. You're overcompensating. You're coming out deep throat in a lollipop. And, and I get it, man. You got you to gotta do your character. And, and I just want to let you know, man. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. And Mike didn't know this was coming. This is all improvised. It's not your fault. Bring it in. Bring it in. Yeah. Yeah. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Okay? Just let it go. <laughs> I know. Thank you. I'll see you in Houston. Oh, you dare me. Well, that just happened. Back to the desk. Jen, wow. Thanks. So, so that's such a good, that's such a solid moment, Jen. So did you know any of this, by the way? Did you know McQueen was retiring? Did you know Guy's bit was coming? I mean, you always know, you always know Guy's bit is coming. Like, even when there's nothing planned, you just put the microphone in front of his face and you just let him do what he does because he's the best in the league at doing it. Um, right up there with, with Gucci. Uh, I knew there was an announcement with McWeenie, um, but... Uh, I didn't, I didn't know exactly how it was going to go down. There's always a couple of different ways things are, but like, it's always presented to me. Like there are multiple outcomes. It's kind of like choose your yeah. own adventure. So it's like our reactions are based on whatever happens in match. Because for the longest time, I remember people were arguing back in the day, like all the matches are rigged. There's no yeah. point in playing a rigged trivia match. No, you know what I mean? But there are ways that Christian has, planned for things to go if one or the other outcome happens you know and so that was just one of the outcome we all knew drew's schedule was getting a little busy to be able to keep up with the competition schedule so that he was gonna have to retire either way i think um but he was also planning on playing through however long he needed to until that that run ended you know and so the fact that the run ended that day meant that he was done with his obligations that day yeah, I mean, uh, I, I know because Drew has talked about it a little bit on various shows and backstage that he found out the day of the match. He, he showed up and Christian told him McQueenie is uh, is retiring after this match. Yeah. He, he has to. He's got uh, commitments that can you know don't, don't allow him to be the league. don't allow him to be in the league. And, yeah. Um, and so that was uh, you know Drew sells it hard there. He says you know we're still going to do it. we're still going to do it. I like that McQueenie plays it as more of a bit. And then the Mike thing, I don't think anybody had any idea Drew was going to do the oh no ball thing. Well, I didn't even know Mike was crashing that interview. Yeah. That was never, that was never, I thought that was going to be kind of McWeenie's moment. And then when Mike comes in, clearly Christian must have shoved him into the frame or he got some inspired thing in that moment and decided he was going to join us. But I had no idea that interview was being crashed. And so it's one of those things where I just kind of have to be on my feet. And so does everyone that's already out there. And I mean, I don't trust anyone more in the league than, than those two to be able to pull something like that off. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty damn good. They're pretty damn good. I think when you talk about you talk about the elite players in this league, and it's and it's not just trivia knowledge, right? You talk about the elite characters, the elite superstars, whatever. I think yeah. we call them main eventers. Um, there's maybe five or six, four or five, something like that, of the people that really right now, if you put them on a on a bill, they're gonna sell the place out. And that's two of them right there. Mike and Mike and Guy are two of the of the big 
you know, five, five or so. And uh, if you put them in a scene together, you put, it's going to be, it's going to be fireworks. I think everybody, but that's the thing that's exactly. So here's, here's something that I, I hear a lot of like rumblings of people complain a lot of the time that they see the same people do live events. And what it comes down to is who's going to put on the most entertaining match. It may not necessarily be the biggest trivia match, but it needs to be entertaining. Otherwise it's just people sitting there answering questions, you know? Uh, and that's something that you can always count on with, with guy, with yourself, uh, with Roka, with Dan, you can always count on certain individuals to put on. I thought, um, you know, wild berries, like they're not good. They're, they're the perfect example. Not the best at trivia, but you know what you're getting when you sign up for it. Yeah, and it's going to yeah, be yeah. hella entertaining. Agreed. Hella entertaining. I, I concur. Um, so so that is uh, that is our, our first bit to watch. I, I, I love that that moment. I, I know Guy's very proud of it. Um, it's a shame that the Houston event had to get you know canceled or postponed, whatever we're going to call it. Because it's so fun. It is so, so fun. I love that arena. I absolutely do. And I have very fond memories of our, our first trip there, you know, so I hope that we get to go back there soon. Um, I have probably have better memories of it than Guy does. I don't know, Jen. I mean, we, one thing. Was he we, really proud of his busted? I feel like he wore his busted lip like a badge of honor. We all had so much fun in Houston, but I think, did, did you come out to the bar with us afterwards? Remind me. I can't remember. Yes, briefly. So that was the, like. One big thing that happens a lot is when people talk about moments in the Schmodown and how Action Army is such a big fan base, such a big part of it. Yes, I met a lot of them then. Action Army, in a lot of ways, the way it is now was born from Houston. It was all, it was all, they all banded together and kind of met each other. We all hung Mm -hmm. out at that bar. We went to that bar that had one bartender. We bought out every single drink in the bar. We all got just friggin' hammered and just like Roka was was freestyling at one point. Uh, It was totally outrageous. Um, one of the best memories, if you ever get a chance to go to one of these Houston events, if we go back and do it next year or later this year, you got to do it. Houston was the most fun event probably we've ever had. Oh, my God. I remember I had to drive Brett Sheridan. I had never met Brett Sheridan. Um, I had only heard the legends of Brett Sheridan, and I had to drive him to the airport in the morning. I don't remember how I got signed up for that gig. Um, but it's, uh yeah, I just remember picking him up from his hotel on the way to the airport, and he was an absolute disaster. I don't think he'd slept yet. I was just like, so, this is you. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, drink it in. Like, <laughs> And I was like, I don't have to. I'm driving us, and like, that's a DUI. <laughs> Outrageous. Well, yeah, it was, it was a super fun time. So uh, let's let's uh, let's get into the next match here. Uh, we're gonna keep the keep it rolling here. We got Ben Goddard, uh, a few Streamlabs and super chats. Uh, Goddard, you let me know if we want to read any of them now, if they're relevant to what we're talking about, if we want to wait. Till yeah, that'd after. be fun. Um, we can. Well, he's not here, so I guess if we were gonna read them now, we'd. Uh, we'd uh, uh, yeah, I've got one for Brandon Buck that just came in. Uh, the fact that Jessica kept a straight face and didn't break on the deep throating a lollipop line. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got a question from Adam Potasic. Jen and Ben, uh, thought experiment. Uh, let me go back to just y'all. Uh, assuming you both had about 40 hours a week to put in, how long do you think it would take to train someone from a shallow movie knowledge to an MTS ch- uh, content- championship contender? Love y'all. Keep up the great work. 40 hours a week? Yeah. Like if you had 40 extra spare hours just to train this person, how long? maximum two weeks i feel like i could do it you think as long as they as as long as they had the time to commit because i know how to study for this league i know how to study for this league probably better than most of the competitors do it's a strategy thing what makes you hate to break it to you (laughs) like if i wanted to dedicate that much time i would but I, i i i don't have that time i really don't do you think, like, when you say that you know how to do it, uh, that it would take a couple weeks with free time? You think you understand it that that much? I mean, like, yeah. it, really? Yeah, I've watched so many of you um, make the same mistakes, or I've watched different people prep different ways. And one of the tricks of this is you have to know how the person learns the best. Like, as far as like what their brain, like the mode that their brain computes all of this in. And that's like a learning style thing. And if you can figure out what that learning style is, like for me, 
uh, I'm not a reading person. I'm either a writing or a listening person. So I'd have to sit there and just listen to it on repeat, kind of like how Smets does. Smets knows how he learns things. So that's how right. that's his mode of learning. Um, I, I think that I could take someone with average movie knowledge and make them into a really great player in, in two under two weeks, in two weeks. If I, if they dedicated the same time that I did, because that's the key. It's like one, figuring out how they learn the best. And two, just, I need to know who their opponent is. That's the other thing. I want to know I, who I, their opponent, I want to know who their opponent is because it's just as much studying as it is studying for that specific opponent. I think, uh, you know, I give you credit, Jen, for, uh, for, for having been in the position you've been in for a long time. I think you're correct and that there's definitely an efficient way to study. And I know you've been around in, in a capacity that you've been in pretty much in a different one than anyone else, even having written questions at one point. I think yeah. two weeks is a little aggressive for a shallow movie knowledge. Just having, having known as a pretty extensive movie knowledge, what it actually takes in two weeks of studying or even two months of studying what I can accomplish. Um, because it's not, you can't only learn one aspect and, you, and, and there are some movies you have to watch. You can't, oh, I know. You can't do it by not watching movies. And so I think uh, my, my guess when somebody but it comes down to, it comes down to strategy. So it's not, it's not necessarily training someone to win every match. It's training for that specific match. You can be an amazing MMA fighter, but if you come up against someone whose skill set in a certain area is better than yours and they know that that's the problem, it's knowing yeah. your opponent. So that's part of this is so it's like, yeah, I can make them a better player, but I can I can definitely help them win if I know their opponent. Yeah, competitive I think is different than contender. So I think I think training someone to be competitive definitely. I think training somebody to be a contender like at the top level is a little different because I think it's that's that's hard to accomplish. But then again, this may happen sometime. At some point, Christian might actually find a way to build a show around a concept like that. I think that would be fascinating. I think people would love to watch that. Yeah, um, major Schmodown personalities training people up. Um, so Goddard, let's get into the, uh, the, the next match here. So this is actually one Goddard was in so earlier in the season. We had the pride going up against the butcher boys. Um, now this is the pride's first match. So Rachel, Rachel Silvestrini had played with Devon last year. Um, she had had a couple matches with him. I think actually going back to the previous year, I want to say that was 2018 in corruption. They were or in a, the corruption tournament. They were a team and Goddard, obviously you're a, you know, this was a rookie match for you. Um, now, you know, Owen has been around doing a lot of cool production stuff in Schmodown for a while. And Vinny was a name known around Collider. So he got drafted. I think the idea going into this match was that the pride was supposed to be. That's that's the Schmodown like on brand team, right? Like you guys are they want you guys to win. You know, Goddard, you're obviously on SEN and, and Silverstrain have been in the league. But I also think that it was the expectation was that it was relatively even. Would you agree, Jen? Yeah. I would say I would say it was fairly not fairly even keel for sure. And what's really interesting about this match, and the reason we're going to cue this up here, is how we're... heated everyone got. Yeah, because there's, there's a bit in here that doesn't actually make it to the match. We're going to talk which about which was it a shame. Second. It really was a shame. Should have been kept in. Yeah. So let's let's cue this up. What is Dante's answer? Interesting too, Jen, because when we talk about writing the questions and the actual specifics of the question, repeat the question. The specific of this question, what is Dante's answer? Right. So yes, that's like such a clear like. What does Dante say in the movie? Not that what which movie is it? Is it Return of the Jedi? That is incorrect for a big two point steal. The pride. So and this is by the way Rachel's category. This is the Rachel strength. Yeah, um, exactly. What? Okay, gonna have to give him a gotcha. Five, it, it, Four, uh, three, uh, two, Empire. one. Empire Strikes Back. It ran out of time. She's wow, Empire. it's almost like you've never seen a Kevin Smith movie before. Are you kidding me? Oh, answer the question. Oh, it's almost like, so like, oh, it's almost like they've never seen a Kevin Smith movie. <laughs> Vinny getting in there. Oh, oh my goodness. Right, so there's a challenge now. All right, so. Oh, so if I wish we would have left the cameras running at this point, because look, I, this is one of the reasons why I won't compete is because I know myself Yeah. and, and much like Rachel, I would not be able to hold back if someone was talking smack while I'm trying to do some kind of thinking in my head like that, trying to do any kind of recall, unless that's how I studied, you know, like to be prepared for that kind of a uh, recall. Oh, wow. Look at this. I'm just breaking my set. Uh, anyways, <laughs> but yeah, unless I'd practice for that 
to be able to t- like handle it. It's just totally different underneath lights. I think it's so interesting, and I and, and Goddard, when you have a second, I want to bring you on here to talk about this. But my my estimation of watching this live was that so you and Rachel came in knowing that you wanted to have some heel energy, and Rachel is a very nice person. You're a very nice person. I, I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't Thank categorize you. either one of you as people who like. When I'm our natural, you, our natural heels. Neither of you guys has like an fu edge when I talk to you. I guess you maybe a little more so than Rachel sometimes because you have like your hot takes. You'll, but even so, I would say you're a pretty nice guy. Yeah. And so you guys were in in your first experience here trying to both play the characters, do the bit, and also be accurate with your trivia, which is where you have the line at one point and it's got cut out where you look at him and you say, we're heels because everybody's giving you guys a hard time. <laughs> well, okay. So what had happened is that uh, they got Kevin Smith and one of their questions was what country does yoga hosers take place in? Yeah. Like, so yeah, we, we like I, I said, I think that that does stay in the match where I was like, oh, what country does Scarface take place in or something like that? Like we yeah. were joking and I was laughing the whole time. And then, um, they got what comi- uh what comic book legend makes an appearance in mall rats. And then Rachel's like, Oh, any more softballs? And and then Christian's like, stop complaining about questions. Like, why are why should we? We're heels. And like, I didn't like and that the no, fact that that's- complaining about questions is not a heel move. It's obnoxious. And all you're gonna do is piss off Christian. Well, that's Everyone true. has literally. I could. I. I. Before I went on backstage, I literally pulled up a compilation <laughs> of people in matches talking about how easy questions are. 100%. So this is literally part of the game. It's whether what, you like it or not, whether you find it obnoxious, that's totally up to you. But to call out us specifically is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And how much like heat we got for it is crazy. It's what but true do. or false. This match was later in the day. We were no. False. This was the first match of the day. Are you sure about that? I have the only time I've ever played second was when Corruption did the live stream. That was the only time I've ever played second because I'm on the crew, so I help out afterwards. I played uh, first in the morning against RB3. We played first in the morning for this. So, so my Winter Soldier says, "Yeah, I'm sure that compilation didn't piss Christian <laughs> off at all." <laughs> yeah, I solid. didn't. I didn't play it for anybody. I just made it for myself. Um, what? So- That's even sadder. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going oh, to. I didn't get a chance. Was- this will show me. <laughs> so Goddard, Goddard, what I would say that's, that's really interesting about this is because because you're right. If you go look at the, the history books, you watch old matches. I mean, mistakes that Christian doesn't like are things that happen and they've happened time and time again, which is why he doesn't like them. So people complaining yeah. in post-game matches going after the writers or the ease of questions. These are classic issues. And they're ones that I think the game is better if they don't become a part of the game. But it doesn't change the fact they are part of the game. So I know... Yeah. You, as somebody who's watched a lot of matches in preparation, is watching all these players, all these great players, by the way, do that and literally do that move. And you're just thinking, like, that's our move. We're going to do that. We're going to rattle their cage a little bit. And so what I think is hilarious about this, though, is that they say something under their breath while you guys are trying to get the steal. And Rachel's the Kevin Smith person, right? So she's supposed to, like, she's supposed to just know this. You guys have had the whole time watching them miss the question. She should... The second they like, say, we may have steal? to keep her out of the building when Kevin finally does play his oh, match. <laughs> we will, like she will have a restraining order on her by yes. the end of the day. Will, <laughs> what I think is so crazy is that Rachel's sitting there and she, there's a couple things happening. You can see it in her face. Number one, she's trying to maintain the heel thing because you guys are going back and forth. Number two, she's trying to place the information because she knows the movie. She knows Kevin Smith and she's ready, but she's distracted by them. But yeah. What yes. happens is in the end, she word vomits out an abbreviated answer that is exactly the correct answer. It's exactly what Dante says in the movie. He says Empire. That's his answer. It's not Empire Strikes Back. In fact, what you say, Goddard, Empire Strikes Back, is a wrong answer technically. Yeah, it's the wrong answer. Because they ask the question, what yeah. is Dante's answer? His answer is Empire. She gets yeah. it right, so which is yeah. why the controversy of this is hilarious because yeah. people don't it's realize so that. And that's the thing is that this is my fault as a teammate is that I didn't like, I knew she knew this answer. Yeah. I didn't want her telling me in case they overheard it. Cause it's when clerks came out, there were no prequels. So you literally you, go into multiple choices, literally not an option. Like yeah. maybe they should have, if they didn't. So we only got a one point steal. There's three options. Yeah. There's not even four options in multiple choice unless they uh, offered up the Christmas special or something like that, which is possible. But so I didn't want her saying it like whispering empire, whispering empire strikes back. Cause I didn't want any chance of them stealing it, like them overhearing. And so I should have had her say that like, Hey, it's empire. So if something like this happens 
or, you know, like if I saw her struggling, I could have been like empire or I should have called a repeat like that. That's what I should have done. Like should have been like, repeat the question. So we're not running out of time. So I should have just been like, repeat the question. Like, so we yeah. get an extra 15 seconds and they can talk all they want and we're still going to get the steal. The reason that we put yeah. this in here is to illustrate the idea that when you're a newer team and you're trying to get your gimmick down, sometimes there can be a couple speed bumps. They're yes, not necessarily yes, match ending speed bumps, but I think definitely the the thought to say we're heels, you didn't think in the time that's a stupid thing to say. But looking back, it's like, I, why would I why would I say that? No, I had no <laughs> idea. Like I was just halfway joking. I was like, oh, why? We're heels. Like, right. so like I I don't watch wrestling. Like I watched it, you know. I used to love that movie, uh, Ready to Rumble, because I had like Goldberg and Sting, and it was hilarious. But I don't know storylines or heel moves or face moves and stuff like that. So when I got told I have to like be an a hole, I was like, okay, so how do? Okay, That's when you okay. come to me and we have a chat. Like <laughs> yeah, I, I no, when when they told so for instance when Christian was was having Silver Streety uh, turn, he actually yeah. was like, hey, I just want you to remind her before you guys go out there, like. This is how you're going to, this is how I'm going to weave you through these questions. Like yeah. she and I had that conversation before and she legitimate, she truly cares about her character development on the show because mm -hmm. she took those notes and was like, thank you so much. Like for having this conversation and reminding me while we went out there, because it's not her natural character to be no. a heel. You know what I mean? And that's what I feel like. And I'm not calling An like Andrew and John are both very nice people, but one, like they're both actors as well. So they can fall into this character. And they're both like, we've always said like the outlaw is just an amplified version of John Roca. So it's very natural to him. This isn't natural to either of us. So it does yeah. come off like harsher. It does come off like a little sharper because it's such a, it's such a turn. And like, we're, I'm not used to like, I don't know that, that happy medium. <laughs> And that's why when yeah. you when you brought up that rookie symposium, I would have died for that. Like that would have been perfect because like I've been begging, begging, yeah. begging Christian well, to like let's do this already. You know, um, my whole thing is he thought certain people didn't need to go through it, and because they were already established in the league. And I basically, uh, and it's something that he and I kind of butted heads on. But when when I say Christian and I butt heads, it is the most cordial butting heads ever because he respects my opinion and I respect yeah. his. And I think that he, because I know how to approach Christian on these type things and have an open dialogue with him, which he's very good about. Um, we, we have that kind of relationship where we can talk to each other, but I, I basically, I talked to him and I was like, look, there's certain people that are even established players in the league. And while they're great players, they still need this kind of information because not necessarily they're going to be heels or they're going to, you know, have a character change, but they need to know how to speak for themselves and cut promos. Yeah. And honestly, they also need to be able to not take the things that other performers are doing to them during match play personally, well, I because think we've had that issue before and yeah. it just causes all kinds of tension. People get butt hurt, and I just am not, I, I'm not there to manage um, high schoolers. Well, I think Jen, you know, to 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 add to that point here uh, is that we've talked about this on on backstage a couple times recently. When you came on the action guys, we talked about this a bit. Yeah, like the that whole idea, so fun. Yeah, the whole idea is that like some people, if they pick a character, as you said, Goddard, that's like an extension of themselves. You know, it's like an amplification amplification of Roca. It's, yeah, it's easier for Roca to be Roca because whether he's a yeah. face or he's a heel, he's still got a lot of Roca in there. But if you yeah. talk about people who are trying to come in and be something totally against type, and they're not a natural performer. That's where you're going to run into those people who are trying to freelance out there. They're trying to, they're trying to, you know, have a good time and improvise. And it, yeah, I don't need to see you trouble. try to play. I don't need to see your first attempt at playing jazz. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 and it's tough. <laughs> hey, some people I'm can a, improvise. I'm a solid scat man. <laughs> yeah. We're heels. Proves that. Okay. <laughs> I can definitely remember some, some of the earlier stuff on where like I was not as good as a heel or like, I think actually the worst stuff I did probably to be honest was the, it was that corruption tournament as I was supposedly transitioning to face. It was the in-between stuff Christian wanted me to do where I was coming in and he was like, you, you need to be, you're going to, you're joining the horseman. Remember, like that's going to happen. So you and Riley are teammates. You need to be able to start to make the transition to being like a face. You can't just keep doing the same thing. And I don't remember which match it was. Yeah, because but unless there's some major event, you know what I mean? Unless there's some major catalyst that happens it has to be a more gradual turn. You know what I mean? Um, 
face turns kind of happen more over time, whereas heel turns can happen like that because there's often lines of like betrayal and things that have been leading up to it that you didn't see coming that were like slow building blocks to get there. Do you know what I mean? So we were trying to, at least Christian was trying to lay the groundwork for you to make that turn where it felt natural and it didn't just feel like, oh, Ben's a good guy now. Yeah. And I, and I, like I've said before, you know, it was, it was the part of the character stuff that I was the, I was the least prepared for. And I was like the worst at, and I, and I yeah. remember distinctly, like I have this memory of being in Chicago backstage arena, you know, the theater's full sold out thousand people We're downstairs in the green room and I'm sitting there with Riley. We're on a couch and right across from us are Snyder and Draco. And we've all got, you know, food and drinks or whatever. Yeah. And, and they're, I'm a face at this point. So like supposedly like I'm a face at this point. And, and so I know like I'm not supposed to be like making comments and like giving them a hard time. And also like what I would normally would do in a studio taping, like standing on the other side of the room, not looking at them, not talking to them, making no contact. Like that's, that's what I would previously do. Cause that, that would give me my edge in matches. We're sitting there and Draco's making jokes and we all go out there and like, I do my best. And I have a couple comments that are like, but I'm clearly playing without an edge. Like very clearly. I remember walking into the match feeling like that. I remember like my energy walking in was way different than I was used to. And I remember thinking, I can't, I can't play the game like this. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to be a face, there's got to be a different angle here. I got to figure something out because I don't like this. And so like, I remember in Houston, when I played Andrew, it was way easier because Andrew was like a clear heel. So I could go back at him easily. Like I, I, could, I still had to be yeah. a higher ground, the, like the respected competitor, but he was obviously the heel. So I got to be as kind of rude as I wanted while still maintaining my tweener status. And you know, some, sometimes you're just not a, as good at handling that stuff. It's just not, I think what it all comes down to is people are like, Oh, heels, bad guy face face is a good guy. It's not as simple as that. It's finding what your version of that is and finding what feels authentic to you in a way where you're not like, I got to go be Mr. Rogers now. You know what I mean? Like, because that's when it comes off almost phony. And then people don't buy that either. You know, then you're just being shoved down people's throats in a way that feels really inauthentic and fans smell that. Um, I always think like of people that had face runs in different organizations. I always think of like CM Punk because whether he was a face or a heel, he was still his own brand. Right. And I feel like that's something that people really struggle with in terms of staying consistent with themselves through through like with their character through line, but like finding those different colors of and finding what their motivation is in that turn. I agree. Um, speaking of people who are trying to find their characters, like people trying to find, sort of find their their voice in the Schmodown, our next match is against you know two former champions. Um, it's it's against another member of the Horsemen, John the Outlaw Roca, and Paul Oyama, Primetime himself, youngest uh, youngest singles champ of all time, a player that uh, caused a lot of controversy in the league. What I actually think in the end has been one of the better additions to the league the last couple of years. Big fan of Paul, and obviously John, who you know is is, is John, it's Roca. Um, <laughs> At this point, when this match happens, no. Roca is he's coming back uh, in, in season seven. You know, he had had an exit from the tournament against Bibiani and Oyama had lost in pretty crushing fashion to me at Spectacular. It was a tough showing. He wasn't he wasn't happy with how that went. I don't think anybody would be. Um, and he comes in and there's new wheel slices and everybody's, you know, hyped at season seven. It's a big mm -hmm. marquee matchup. We're going to pick up here in the second round um, where it's pretty even. I, I believe John is is better. He's doing better than Paul in round one. I think he gets like one more point maybe. Um, and Paul spins his slice. He gets he gets YA adaptations. Which I can't remember if he gets spinner's choice or if he gets the actual slice, but he gets it and he takes it like total confidence. He's he's ready to go. And John watching John in this match is watching a true veteran fighter. That's what you're watching. You're watching somebody who no matter how beaten down, he's a legend for a reason, right? He's mm -hmm. going to be in it. He's going to be in it in this YA category where it's just like, what is John Roca going to do stealing questions about beautiful creatures or Hunger Games Part 4? Like, that's just not a John Roca strength. We can cue it up here. Why? Because he's doing pretty good. This is his last one, Mark. Right? Paul, your last question. So Paul's gotten five well, points in the round. So Paul, that patience. The 2013 film Beautiful Creatures takes place in what southern United States? 
And he likes this movie. He told me afterwards. He's a fan. Five. Four. Louisiana. That is incorrect for a two-point steal, John Roca. We cannot offer multiple choice. <laughs> it's such a, like, he's sitting there. He's like, I don't know. Four. Three. Uh, South Carolina. Heads, Carolina. Tails, California. It is South Carolina. What? Two points. <laughs> Two points. John wow. Roca hits the steal. 13 11. What a massive play. steal by Roca. And here comes Winston massive. Marshall. It's a, it's a full luck steal. And you can see the look on, you can see the look on Paul's face and John's face. I'll tell you, Jen, the thing about <laughs> that moment that I like so much that illustrates what it feels like to have your balls clipped in a match better than anything I can think of. Because Paul is literally sitting there when he gets that wrong, and he's thinking, I didn't go to multiple choice. Yeah. I can tell by the look on John's face, he's not going to get this. So, okay, I did pretty well. I'm up six, I think is what it says. John's going to have to crush. He's going to have to absolutely annihilate me to have a good round here. And it goes exactly the opposite. John Widger is just a total random guess, and Paul's like, I'm losing. I'm now losing the match. How did that happen? Exactly. I mean, Oyama from that point on was basically playing with a cone of shame around his head, you know, because <laughs> and even he said it. He's like, I was he's like, I wasn't going to get it. He's like, I made an educated guess. But he was like, if I gave him multiple choice, he was still going to get the points no matter what. He had a better chance of Roka missing if he didn't give him multiple choice. Hundred. That, that was his that was his thought process and going through it. So. I mean, people in the chat here are saying uh, balls clipped, damn Ben. Uh, but the, the reason I say that is because it's when I say that, it's like, talk about you lose all confidence. You lose all sense of confidence in that moment. You have all this bravado when, when that moment happens, when you're like, I'm doing pretty well. Okay, I didn't know this one, but I didn't go to multiple choice. There's no way they're going to get this. And then they surprise you. The reason it hurts so much is because your expectation is so attached to this idea. You've already decided this is the outcome. I'm going to go into this next mm -hmm. round up this many points. And the two-point swing there, Cannot be understated. No, absolutely not. But it's interesting because I feel like this match was like, it was the start of a different shade of Paulo Yama because I mean, look, anyone that's hung out in the, in the fan group has seen that I am not one to pull punches when it comes to people who have stepped out of line in a non kayfabe way around the group, because I take this group's chemistry and this production's chemistry very seriously, because all it takes is a couple of bad apples to ruin a show that essentially was running very smoothly. And when Oyama came in, he, he says it was because he had a sort of chip on his shoulder because I've talked to him since. And he says, you know, I came in, I was, I wasn't necessarily cocky. I just felt like I had to prove myself and I had to defend myself. And I'm like, no, you didn't, you didn't have to come in and like prove yourself in that sense. All you had to do was come in and be kind to people outside of character, obviously, and play well. And you did the playing well part. It's just the other stuff that he really, really struggled with for a long time. I mean, this was like, I guess probably four months of, I mean, I remember I was not available when he won the belt from Merle. Um, I was out of town and Christian sent me a text message and he was like, Hey, you're never, cause I was doing fight for the fallen for AEW and Christian sent me a text message. He's like, Hey, do you want to know what happens? And I was like, always. And he sends it to, he sends me a picture of Paul holding the belt. And I just remember being like, <laughs> we are so screwed because it was like, that's all we needed. I knew there was other stuff going on that Christian was unaware of because I keep a lot of this stuff off his desk because he's got enough on his plate. So yeah. essentially I'm kind of like the, uh, the guidance counselor that if you have a problem, I'm somehow the person that gets to hear about it and then has to try to solve it before it ends up on Christian's desk. Uh, because once it gets on Christian's desk, you don't want whatever wrath is going to come at you from yeah. that point. Um, and so for for that whole thing, um, I I think I had had enough of Paul after the next studio show or like the next time he came into town. He was just rude and rubbing people the wrong way and a lot of veterans the wrong way. And that's when I have a problem. When you come in and you disrespect certain people that have been cornerstones of this game since I can remember, since before I was even there, we have a problem. And 
I had a talk with Christian about it. And then the next thing I know, I, I got a letter from Paul saying he'd like to talk to me and we would wanted to sort this all out. And I said, yeah, yeah, we'll do it after spectacular. You know, like you have a lot on your plate and frankly, I'm busy right now. and don't want to handle this. Just come in and don't be a jerk at spectacular. Yeah. And then spectacular went down. And I think spectacular was the biggest dose of terrible tasting cough syrup to Paulo Yacht. Like it was like the thing that woke him up. Like, oh wow, I am breakable here. And yeah, I, I know he had already that was the first dose he'd really gotten of it. I know he had already sent out a, a letter at that point to a few people to kind of talking about what had happened. And I, I, he was already contemplating it, but I definitely think he had gone through some personal stuff leading into spectacular, as he said. And yeah, I think it made him kind of rethink the way that the game affected him and how it made him feel. I think there's even a cut scene actually um, might've been in this match. We just watched, or it could have been in a previous one. Mark Ellis live. Um, net. Will Christian Harloff be a special guest? Yeah, it might be in this scene actually. Right. Uh, we'll see, see if Potter can pull it up. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it must be here. Okay, great. Hey, Paul. Oh, hey. I just wanted to say, I meant what I said out there, you know? I was really hard on you last season, and I just, I don't know. You look like you're playing different. I can tell that you've changed, and you've taken this to heart. Just wanted to wish you good luck. Oh, that, that especially coming from you, that, that does really mean a lot. Thank you. Kill it this season, man. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so that, yeah. that illustrates it. I didn't, I guess I didn't even realize that it happened. I must, I, some, sometimes I guess I miss scenes here and there. I can't believe that happened. I've never seen that before. That's to be different. fair, Ben, there's a lot of content. Like yeah. that is something <laughs> that SEN and Schmodown is not, uh, does not struggle with is constantly putting out new content for people. And so I, I can understand you missing that. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was nice to be able to help make sure the audience knew that that change had happened. You know, it's not as simple as, oh, his sunglasses are off. He took off the leather jacket. Oh my God. You know, yeah, it's right. a, it's an actual character change and it has to be, sometimes it's not just the per performer doing it. It's the people around the performer and how they relate to that person that helps make that change um, obvious, you know? Um, yeah, Cause I, so, yeah. remember, I remember that scene where he took off the sunglasses, but that was the, that was the one that I thought we were watching, but uh, that the scene we just watched actually illustrates the point even more accurately, which is pretty cool because you're in it, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. Um, so I believe the next match we're going to queue up here is another one that I'm very familiar with. Um, this is a match. Someone asked that, uh, me, I think in the in the chat, if I got mad with MJF flipping off a kid at the fan at a fan event. Listen. MJF charges five hundred dollars for a cameo to tell you what a giant piece of crap you are. If you don't like, it is well documented that Max is going to be Max whenever he's given that opportunity. So, like anyone that expects him to act any different, that man will not be anything but that, like ever. I don't care if if you take your baby up, to take a picture with him. It's not going to be the most adorable picture you're going to frame. It's going to be a picture of him flipping off your child. You know, like that's just who he is, like it or not. Like that's that's Max. You know. And uh, he won't break that for anybody. Is this a, uh, a so, no, fight? I don't have a I don't have a problem with it. Like it's more of you can't get outraged when some when you are warned. Like people are warned when they go into fans event with Max. They're like, listen, if you're expecting him to be nice to you and to like shake your hand, and like, no, you're you understand you're basically paying someone to roast you. Who is this Max? What Max M J F Maxwell Jacob Friedman. I highly recommend looking up his work, Ben. Okay. <laughs> For whatever you have your next <laughs> heel turn moment, this is, uh, well, I don't know how much you'd be able to get away with this in Schmodown, considering our language uh, rules, but it's gotcha. still a good watch. And honestly, uh, some of the best heel work ever, because even Emma was like, I love what he's doing to the Dungeons and Dragons community. She's like, oh, I'm one of that community and I can't get enough of this. Wow. Okay. So just super, super, super healy. Oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, so, so the next one we're going to get into is actually final exam versus uh, the experiment, which is another great match. It's another high scoring match. It's another polyama match. Um, mm -hmm. And this is one where the delinquent Lon Harris gets introduced. Um, he's an awesome character. He's a fantastic character. Um, what are you talking about character? I just thought Lon had fallen on hard times. <laughs> 
I mean, there's actually a scene too that gets shot with Lon that it's like him and he's he's outside, he's drinking with Winston. Um, I I don't think we have that one pulled up, but they're in the alley and he's just like, ah, I'm done, man. I don't even have the motivation to do it anymore. And Winston's so Winston's like, well, what can I do to get you to play? Can I get you another bottle of that? And he's like, yeah, if you get that, I'll play. And then uh, it's it's pretty good. It's it's a really really good scene. So. <sighs> I didn't think I could love anything more than I loved the professor, but here we are. Time for Oyama final exam. Also, Lon being on swag is just incredible. Lon, hey, that is not a professor. That is, in fact, a delinquent. Looks like he stumbled off a train in the 1920s. Yeah, he looks why like. Is, why was Kalinowski holding his chair? Yeah, that's what I was. Wow. What am I missing here? Oh, because because it's their team. They're their heels. What's he doing? What is Christian talking about? Stumbled off a train in the 1920s? No. Stumbled out of a bar in late nineties, uh, late nineties Seattle. Yeah, I buy that. Yeah, there you go. That looks right. Yeah, late nineties Seattle. Oh, so good. Go home now. Who are you? Wow. You. Who are you? <laughs> I was just like, come answer some questions, and I was like, I don't know. Effort sounds lame, but <laughs> I bet, you know, I was like, I, I feel like maybe we could beat these guys without trying. So that'd be cool. Oh, wow. Very odd. Uh, I feel if Drunk oh my God, version what is, of Drunk Brett came alive, it would be right there. Christian, this is the oddest match I've ever called in this young season. I'm looking at two nice, upstanding young gentlemen, a I wizard know. and the eighth floor from Snow White. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Who are all those people? I ask, prime time Paul Oyama. How are you, sir? I haven't seen you in a bit. I'm good, yeah. Oh, all right. Look at your clocks, baby. All right. Yeah. No all sunglasses. Right. No, okay, it's, well, it's a different look, Oyama. This is still a movie trivia showdown match. There are still so rules to be baby. had. Lon, are you paying attention? Not really. <laughs> Young man, I'm about to read the rules for round number one, and all you right. will listen. Right. In round number one. It's so good. It's it's such like a it, it's such a fun character. I, I gotta say, there there aren't that many Jen where Look, okay, the action thing is a big character, right? You come in, you're really yeah. you're real dicks, but there's not a lot of complexity to that. You just be as dickish as you can. That's what you do. Yeah. You do, like something like Lon's character or like what Tom did with Video Drew takes so much more effort. Takes so much more like you have to be so much more careful and committed. Um, like people don't realize this. Tom is like a foot taller than me. And when you <laughs> see him next to me in interviews, he's physically like this. The entire match. Like if I sat like that, I I would be bedridden for like a week and a half, you know. Um, so yeah, like their commitment, it's not just a character, it becomes like a thing, a living, breathing thing. And the fact that they can stay in it the entire match is really impressive. Yeah, I completely agree. I love Lon's character here. So this is interesting. You I know, watched, Lon I mean, we watched video Drew eat an entire thing of lipstick. She ate the, she actually ate it. Yeah. Oh, here we go. This is this is the match I was talking about. This match is this this scene is so good. <laughs> Winston Marshall has been a great great addition as a manager. I've been, I've been so good, happy. so good. Very happy with him as manager. He's actually uh, he's filling in as the co-host on backstage this week because I'm I'm out this week. Oh, fantastic! And, yeah, it's him and Roker this week. What is going on with you? Like nothing. I've been trying to get a hold of you this entire time. Like I drafted you like a month ago. I haven't. I mean, I've said, been right here. I've been sitting. <laughs> you don't have the phone anymore? Like I don't need it. Honestly, it's cool. Okay, well, I need you. The Schmodown needs you. Okay, I drafted you. I've got an those ruffian. I mean, uh, screw that. <laughs> <laughs> Lon, what what can I convince you to come back, man? Like I, you, you're the reason that I even got into the Schmodown. Your match against Cody, that's what did it for me. That's why I drafted you. I have a great partner for you. You guys can absolutely kill it. Like, I, you can come in and do what you do best, man. Uh, I don't know, dude. I'm I just not into it anymore. I mean, it's like they don't they don't care about academics. They don't care about being smart. They don't value anything but, you know, like not caring and goofing around and being a slob and like, uh, oh, I think I'm out. What if I, uh, if I get you a refill of that? Will you come back? Oh, yeah, then, yeah. I'll do it? Yeah. <laughs> That's got to be one of the best Shmodan scenes ever filmed. I just like that there were little peaks of 
there were little peaks of the professor that like kind of bled through, you know? Yeah, it's great. It's great. Uh, it's so funny. God. That, uh, oh. that definitely got added uh, during the murder trivia when he was playing. Like he, it was like, Lon's really good at trivia. And so like <laughs> Emma was like, I think the professor's still in there. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, man, he's not. He's gone. <laughs> he's still great. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think it's it's really interesting if you look if you think about Lon as a player, you look at Oyama as a player. So Oyama's only had a little run of of bad luck, right? He he didn't play that well against me. He didn't play great against Snyder, but he still managed to maintain. Yeah, um, he still kept the belt. Snyder he, honestly he, lost that, that match. Yeah, but I mean, say we can say what we want. Obviously, like maybe you play down to your competition. End of the day, Oyama knew a question for, Snyder didn't in, in sudden death, and he won the match. Right? Like he won. Period. I've gotten mm-hmm. real close. Never won a belt. So. Until I did, but the point is he he still managed to defend. So he's a, he's a champion that won a match and defended the belt, which is hard to do. Yeah. Now he's obviously done well on a team. He's lost a singles match, uh, second one in a row. But Lon, Lon is kind of he's kind of that best player to never win a belt type of player now. Like he's in the position Draco was in that I was in, where you look at him and you're just like on paper, this guy should be able to power through. He What's be able he to- missing then? I believe he was missing uh, no like knowledge of how to play the game uh, and some yeah to like actual strategy, which is why I think Paul is such a great teammate. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's I've said this on a couple shows before, but I don't think there's anybody who I talk deep deep strategy with as much as Oyama. I mean, Drew and I definitely like I think probably in terms of sheer volume, <laughs> it takes the cake because we talk about Shmodown more than I talk about with anyone. Well, you but... guys are practically married, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do a lot of content and obviously like it's common law at this point. I think I said it on your show. How long have you guys been friends? Long time, yeah. No, how long have you guys been friends? <laughs> I've been aware seven years as a common law marriage, Jen. I know what that means. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um but like, but Oyama, you know, who I talk to less than Drew, obviously, but the conversations I do have, I'm always impressed with his age, how locked in he is and how much he understands the, the sort of the concepts, the percentages, the strategy aspects. And so I think that he and Lon together are a really potent team. And I think it's a team I'm really looking forward to because I think yeah. you look at some of the mistakes Lon's made in the past and it just feels like he's in there and he knows how to play the game, but he hasn't, he hasn't like dissected it in a way to control it. He doesn't, he's always lacked that one little aspect. Yeah. I think if Oyama can stay out of his own head and not like get caught up in there, like he's on his way back to winning a belt before the end of the season. I really do feel that way. He had like the fact that he has the knowledge, but if he can just stay grounded enough, you know what I mean? And not get caught up in like the politics and stuff, because like, I feel like that, like you said, the personal stuff that was going on in his life combined with the fact that look, I don't know if you've, I don't think it's so much with action because even when action was heels, people still loved you. Hmm. There are other people that when they're heels, le- people legitimately hate them. And that just yep. means they're doing their job really well. Like I feel like someone that's really subject to that, Mike Kalinowski, yep. hell of a player, but people hate him so much. And it's because yeah. they're good at their job. But that also means while he's playing up there, he's literally playing up there with the room rooting against him or with the live event rooting against him. So that's why it's like it didn't shock me that they lost the belts in Orlando because they're just as knowledgeable as Merle and Roca. That wasn't the issue. But once they lost the crowd, I think that it's a definitely- whole other thing. I think they got destroyed by the crowd in Orlando. I agree with you completely. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that Chance and Mike are nearly as knowledgeable as Roka and, and Dan. I think that's fine. You're biased. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm saying from having watched a lot of matches, I think Dan stands in a tier of his own with the four of those players. I think Roka is incredible, and I think Roka knows a lot. I think Chance knows a lot, and I think Mike knows some. I think Mike, in terms of a, a regular trivia player, is a very good player. Like yeah. definitely like the low end of the highest end of player you can have. But he's not on the level of like a Merle or a Roka in terms of what he knows. He's just focused on other things. That, that's my opinion. I think I've told him this before. I think he has different knowledge, and that doesn't make him less of a player than either of those two. No, I think agreed. he could wipe. I think he could wipe the floor with either of those two in inner geekdom categories. Absolutely. He's- I think it all just comes down to what's your strengths, what's your weaknesses. I will say this: having watched Chance prepare for matches 
he is going to be an absolute force. And I think people should start taking him a lot more seriously. And that's coming from me. That's coming from someone that literally a year ago physically shook the crap out of him and was like, get in line as like a yeah. human being because you're out of line here and you're ruining people's attitude towards you. Um, I've seen him completely shift his mentality um, in, in how he handles that now, but also I've watched him, I've helped them, uh, you know, run through questions and stuff like that. And he, he's on a different level that I don't think he's had a chance to really show people yet. I agree. And, and, and my, my contention that you, you said here was that, uh, just as knowledgeable, I think as a team corruption's as good of a team as the founding fathers, That's why they were able to beat them two out of three times. It's just different knowledge. It's just different knowledge. They just yeah. have different gaps and different, uh, like, they have they just have different gaps is what it comes yeah. down to. So I don't think you can say, oh, well, Merle could wipe the floor. I think that it could go either way. It really can. Anytime those two teams match up against each other, it could go either way. And I think that you're severely discounting corruption if you think that either of them are not as good a players as Merle and Roca. No, I really no, no. My, my, only, my only disagreement with you was just uh, who knows the most. That's all I was saying. Nothing about quality of player, nothing about quality of team. It's just who knows the most is all I was saying. If it came down to Iron Man, maybe. But that's not how this game typically runs a lot of the time. Agreed. And if it was, I wouldn't I wouldn't love it nearly as much. Uh, Goddard, uh, I'd love to know any Streamlabs or Super Chats, but also I saw a question on the screen here that was, who is the best player currently playing not to win a belt? I know we suggested that it was maybe Lawn. I'd love to know what you guys think if you have any different opinions. Hmm. That is a great question. Let me marinate on that. Singles or... any? I mean, I just think any. I guess discount Star Wars and Energate them because they're so specific. But yeah, singles or teams. It feels like, it feels like the class of player. It's like Lawn, it's Tom, it's Paul. It's like... It's those players that are technically like the second tier players. And I say that second tier, but it's more just because they haven't gotten that belt. You know what I mean? I feel like once you get the belt, then it's like, oh, you're, you're naturally breakthrough. Um, it's guy, Tom, guy, guy, guy is probably Tom, so Paul, to Pre Tom, Tom and Paul Preston, I feel like are going to be two of those guys to watch. Yeah, Paul I Preston's would, got a lot of knowledge. Lon, I, say, I feel like has been there the longest actually. Oh, Talk about someone that has so much knowledge yeah. and always finds himself in just like just so close. Literally an accent away from beating the Patriots. Yep. If he had if he had gotten out of his own way with the kayfabe during the speed round and not saying, oh, during speed round, the answer is, oh, sorry, that was more than two seconds. Did it three times in a row. And they had the Patriots on the ropes the entire game. Him and Gray were such an underrated team. Yeah, the kid is another one. I think if kid. you're going to say, I think if you're going to say based on level of talent and pedigree, the answer is Andrew Guy. He's been close to the top. I mean, look, if you again, if you talk about players that are main eventers, there's only one main eventer to never win a belt. It's Andrew Guy. Mm -hmm. He's the only one. So I think you got to say if you're making if you're making the argument for who is the best player to not win a belt, it's him. Now, he doesn't probably have the easiest path because he doesn't even have a teammate right now. He hasn't even been paired with anyone. But I think it's it's he's in that class with Lon and with yeah. Preston. And I, with Guy, it always comes down to who, I mean, how he's studying, honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really does. He studies a very specific way and like he needs someone to help him study. I don't feel like he does as well when he doesn't have someone to sit there and like quiz him and bounce things off of. That's how Guy studies the best. Yep. Um, Gray, I completely agree. And I was just about to bring this up. We need to see Gray Dre, uh, Gray Drake play yeah, this season. We, I and I feel say, like she should play before other members of the exchange do. She's just been I was sitting there say, waiting like, for I, the right match. I was like, I feel like people have like kind of shoot in Sabrina to partner with the barbarian and that might be a great matchup, but I was wondering why the barbarian and gray hadn't been teamed up before, like even free agency. Cause like, like again, Gray is a number one contender in teams, yeah. and you guys are always bragging about how much knowledge Craig has. Like, Gray literally does this as a job, and so like, can you speak to that of why they haven't gotten teamed up? Even but like, not not even discounting anything Sabrina's gonna do, but even before this, why hadn't that been announced as like your third team? Um, the reason, to be honest, that 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 was that hadn't happened yet is because at the point in the season we were. 
we had only gotten matches for the key members to start the season. I mean, those are the matches that were supposed to come up first because they were the ones that were leading the title shots. And we were getting into the second tier of matches being scheduled in March and then they didn't get scheduled. So we didn't, we didn't get to film any of those matches. Right. Like I, I mean, not being like an, like an ass about it. Like our top four is better than anyone else's top four. We're also people that have belts are defending them and trying to get there. So like yeah. Christian's goal is to get, Roca and Dan and myself and Riley matches to start the year and then goes down that. So Barbarian gets one. Probably next in line was Gray. That was probably our but next. But then, one. if okay, so just to play devil's advocate here, and uh, please don't get mad at me, but if you're doing that, doesn't it kind of pad the exchange's record look so that everybody's like, oh, look how strong the exchange is this season? And it's like, yeah, you guys are strong, but you've also played a lot more matches. That's like comparing somebody that hasn't started their season yet to people that are close to the playoffs. Yeah, definitely. The, the disparity if you don't have numbers, the same if you don't have the same sample size, then it's a moot point. The, the disparity in number of matches played is something everyone's very aware of. Christian's aware of it too, and I, I think there's two answers to the question. One of those answers is uh, yes, we have main eventers. The other is when you win, you get more matches. So people mm -hmm. put players out there and lose, they don't get as many matches. The season hasn't gone as far. We haven't gotten to see that bear out. But the point being, the question of why have Gray and Barbarian not been a team? That was the plan. They were very mm -hmm. likely were going to be a team. We had all discussed it. Um, I think now with the way things have gone, we have a decision to make of who is going to be Sabrina's partner. We don't know yet. Uh, there won't be any teams matches probably played until the fall anyway. So we'll have to see how that goes. But I think we all can agree. We didn't pick up Gray because we thought we didn't want to play Gray. Gray was somebody we almost took with our sixth round pick. I mean, we were, we were totally jazzed on Gray. We had... We, we picked Barbarian because we felt a little better about him, but you know, we were very specific in our picks. I think mm -hmm. we, we wanted to get Gray a match as soon as we could, and we're excited to do it. If there is a singles tournament, we'll be putting Gray in it. I think that you guys would be doing Craig a huge disservice putting him with someone who's an untested entity in the Schmodown, like Sabrina. That's not me knocking Sabrina. I just don't know enough about how she plays. Someone can be incredibly knowledgeable and not good at the game. And I think that Craig has shown that he's ready for an opponent that can keep up to his level. And I feel like Gray is that person. Yeah. Luckily, before we have to play any teams matches, we have a few months to, to bear it all out and see how it goes. Um, we're all big fans of Gray. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't had a lot of communication with Gray this season. She hasn't been to a taping yet. I think she had some stuff going on in her life that prevented her from being able to be as involved. So once we get to that point where we have to put another team into a team's bracket, uh, we will be making those those decisions. And I, and I would say defer to Gucci on that one because that's ultimately his decision. But I know based on what he's been feeling that, you know, that's that's something we haven't really had to face yet. For sure. Gotcha. Right, getting into these two stream labs real quick. Lucas J. Shashek, hashtag Ashton Army. Uh, Cutter Hale, uh, what's up, guys? Ben, salute to you as always. Jen, I just wanted to say I love watching you on Schmode on AEW. I was at the Houston event and wanted to say hi, but sadly didn't get to. I hope to meet you in person soon. Thanks for all that you both do. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. We yeah. that's honestly that's part of that's the best part, like Ben was saying about live events, is actually getting to meet the community that supports us. You know what I mean? And so I feel like that's been the part of this that's kind of hit. I don't know, I can't speak for Ben, but it's hit me the hardest is not being able to feel like that connection to people, you know? Because it's it's one thing to be able to entertain you guys on the internet all the time it's another for like that face to face I, i'm so I'm, I'm much better with faces so i'm like oh my god yes okay once i see you like you'll be forever in that rolodex and i just i miss seeing our fans like in person so there's much. nothing there's an unmatched energy when it comes to those live events there truly is couldn't, couldn't agree more it's the best part of the schmodown i think uh I really hope we can find a way in the near future to get those back going. So let's queue up this next match. Um, we have it. we have the next match is one that uh, I was mentioning earlier. I thought we were going to. I'm very familiar with this match. This was probably the most controversial moment of the year so far, I think, unless I'm forgetting something big. Goddard, you can correct me on that if I'm wrong, but I feel like this was the most like hotly debated. It was it was it or wasn't it moment that's happened so far. That's really dumb because in the end of the day, it's it's pretty irrelevant and looking back on it, it's a pretty heinous oversight in my opinion. Uh, you guys are welcome to correct me if I'm wrong there, but watching this, uh, we'll, I think we just get into it here. Yeah. I think it's just like the ripple effect. Cause it's literally the first question of, a, of and it's a one point question. At a comedy <laughs> club near you soon. Check local <laughs> listings. Mark Uh, your first question comes in the world of action adventure films. And your query is who plays the villain Brixton? 
in Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. So when it gets to Draco here, and he reveals his answer. Uh, yeah, Fast so. and Furious presents. Watch my reaction. Mm -hmm. Like their masterpiece theater or something. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Going to you first, Ben. What do you got? Say Idris Elba. It is, in fact, Idris Elba. Now we go to Jeff Snyder. They call him the Black Superman, Idris Elba. Does Mark Riley, the White Superman, have it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I have it, Mark. Idris Elba. He's got Idris Elba and Mark Andreco. A bit of interesting trivia. My friend wrote Listen that. Listen to what he says. The character named Dr. Andreco in it. Ooh. Wow. Idris Elba. No, 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 no. Whoa, 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 hey, hey, whoa, hey, whoa. Hey. He had Alba. It says Alba. It was an A. Uh, yeah. Misspelling, not a misidentification. That's, you, know you can uh, you can use your challenge or where is it? so mad already. Absolutely. All right, the challenge has been issued. We'll be right back with our ruling. All right, so we can pause it here because the, the the end result is not as relevant. Um, so I told Gucci going into the season. Right. Same thing I said going into Spectacular. The most important job you have as a manager, period. No question. During a match in round one, you've got to watch our opponent's boards. You have to do it because they're going to misspell something. They're going to write the wrong answer. They're going to say the wrong thing. We can't always be paying attention. You misspelling is misspelling, though, is not the issue. Right. If they misspell, but they say it right. Different story. But if they misspell it and just like in his case, he both misspelled it and said it the way he spelled it. That's why it's wrong. Right, because he says the same thing he writes after hearing three other people spell it and say it correctly. So if Gucci catches that, it looks so much better. It's not me screaming and throwing my arms up. Like I shouldn't be the one screaming about that. Gucci should be saying it, and he should be getting in Draco's face about it, and he should be challenging, and I should be sitting there with my arms crossed. Because now the rest of the match, I look like a total ass. It looks like I went after Andraco, which is I, I went after a perfectly suitable ruling. But I'm literally looking for Gucci here, saying, "Where is he?" Yes, we want to challenge that. He's not even to be, he, he's nowhere to be seen. Um, but yeah, there's a whole ruling that happens here. They they all talk about it. They come back. It's ruled one way. They discuss it more. Then it's ruled the other way. And after this moment, for the rest of the first round, the intensity is off the charts. It's like nobody's saying a word. It's awful. Super tight butthole, the old workaholics reference. It's just nobody's nobody's at ease. You, you were there for this, right, Jen? Oh, yeah. I was actually one of the people that finally made the decision because what it comes down to, what yeah. it comes down to is the rules that we put in place and yeah. you don't have to like them. And we can all Monday morning quarterback and armchair quarterback the hell out of this over and over and over again. Yeah. And it's just going to prove, look, the Schmodown is an imperfect game in itself because there's a human element involved, just like baseball, just like football. You don't have to like every single call that gets made. The point is, he knew what he was saying. Yep. Like he knew what he meant. And if there is not a person with that name that is an actor, then you have to give him the point. And that's how it was awarded. Yeah. If you guys don't like that, then you have to bring it up at the next meeting where we sit down and we write the rules. That's it. That's the only way any changes happen. Um, and look, this is what happens with any league. Uh, there's been a huge problem with pass interference in the NFL, and they've had to make all these different changes to the pass interference calls. If you don't like rules, then you need to bring them up and change them accordingly, but they have to be agreed upon before the match starts. Like before all of this, before the season starts, the rules have to be changed then. You can't make it up as you go along, and that's the rule that's been in our rule book. Well, if there's not a person that exists on IMDb with that name, and it's clear he knew what he was talking about, you're basically, you're, you're right. basically, it's a, it's a moot point. It's a, it just, you guys can keep beating this over and over again as much as you want, but it doesn't change the fact that that's what the rule is in our rule book. And I'm sorry, we do have an official rule book. There is an official rule book. I've sat through so many meetings and so many times where people get heated and these are heated meetings where we're like, and it's like higher up people in the game. And I'm just kind of there as like an unbiased opinion. Like exactly. There you go. That was the next point I was getting ready to bring up. JTE would not be considered one of the better players in this game. If we gave a crap about his spelling. 
We just would it. Right. Uh, I think what you mean, Jen, by the way, and correct me if I'm wrong here, is that there was a rule book that was circulated that we were considering using. There's no. Oh, no. I sat through meetings with Christian, with Mark, with Andrew Guy, with Sam Levine, with Rachel, uh, with Mark Andreco. Like there was meetings that took place where there was a rule book written. And that's the rule book that we go off of. Interesting. Uh, I've never seen that rule book. I didn't know that that existed. So, um, uh, yeah. Once I, I again, aware. like I said, I mean, I'm kind of all, I'm like this a weird, all knowing entity in the Schmodown that like, I'm there for everything. I see everything in yeah. terms of this stuff in competition. And that's why I reminded them, this is the rule that's in place. So based on the rule that you guys have in place, that answer has to stand. It just does. Yeah. Because there's no one else on IMDb that matches that name. Yeah, I guess my I guess my contention with it and uh, and we don't same have to thing with the art but... same thing with the articles you know like when people are like oh the and a you know what I mean like unless there is a movie without the article in front of it like thing and the thing right that's when the article matters yeah I think that I think the contention here is that because uh, it's both spelled and pronounced incorrectly <laughs> after three people Shriana spelled Torres it and pronounced it correctly. <laughs> That it would be wrong because that would be like I know who Harrison Ford is, but after hearing three people say his name correctly, I write Harrison Fard like with an A, and I say it, and everybody's like, "That's not his name. It's not Harrison Fard." And I'm like, "Well, there is no Harrison Fard. Of course, I know it's Harrison Fard. I've been saying it that way my whole life. Why am I wrong? Well, that's the wrong name, right? If I wrote Harrison Fard, would you say I was correct? Is that his name? Is there a Harrison Fard on IMDb? No. There's were not. you the first person to say it or were you the last person to say it? The last person to say it after three people said Ford, correct? I'd give you the I'd give you the point. Based on the rules that are in place, you get the point. Interesting. Wild. Well, I didn't I didn't know we had a rule book. Uh, it's like I said, it even even now is getting us discussing it. It is the most controversial call I think of the year. And as somebody said earlier in the chat, I think it kind of shook me as much as it shook Draco. It definitely was a tense moment. He's a friend of mine, so I wasn't I wasn't thrilled to have that kind of bad energy in the room. The irony of this, of course, is that we go on to, to set the team's record in this match and score 37 points. And that wouldn't I think have happened. The rule, but this rule was honestly put in place because of JTE, because there were so many things where it was obvious that JTE knew the answers and he was just like not a good speller. You know what I mean? And so it's like you can't have someone like Elba and Alba when you're speaking they're pretty indistinguishable, unfortunately. Yeah, they're close. And so, sure. yeah. So it's like people that have strong accents, you know what I mean? Like there are certain words that I'll always misspell based on the way I speak because I have a slight Southern accent that is also somehow mixed with a New Jersey accent now because I spent six years there. So it's just, it's. I'm sorry. It, it, that's just yeah. the rule book that yeah. we have in place. And it was there, honestly, to protect players like JTE. So does uh, can I ask a question? Because does the commissioner Clark know about the rule book? Because she said she would have absolutely not given them the point. She said it on SEN. Clark wasn't in the meeting, no. But oh, Rachel yeah. Cushing does. Why wasn't the the commissioner in the meeting? Can the I, commissioner can I ask that? was in the meeting. The com- well, that, that was a long time ago. This no, was, two, was this was, was this was this was Clark was commissioner. It was like this okay. was okay. this was gotcha, twenty gotcha. whatever guy. It was whenever guy beat. No, it was twenty eighteen. It was when guy beat Murrow. Was when we were having these meetings. Same same oh. time period. Okay, so I, I brought it up on screen. I I lost it. Oh, here it is. Uh, would you give Lena Headley instead of Lena Heedy? Uh, yes, you would. Okay, yeah. I would have challenged it and I would have pointed out that rule in the rule book, but it's your, it's your, it's your job to know that rule. And Mark and Draco was in that meeting. So Jen, uh, only because I have done a lot of work on this and I, and I think I should know about a rule book. If there is one, I know there was intention to write a rule book in that meeting. I remember when that meeting happened, I was out of town. I didn't get to be there for it. To my understanding, the rule book you're talking about was never made official and has never been distributed. Because I've asked about it and I've been told there is no rule book. So unless you have a copy that was from that meeting, I don't know what kind of reference. And the only reason I say it, it's not because I think you're wrong. I think you may have seen a physical rule book written in front of you in that meeting. So I think that mm-hmm. was the intention. But only because people in here are saying uh, that they they didn't think there was one. It's been confirmed there hasn't one. I believe Bibiani or... actually was the one that typed it up. Interesting. Okay. So that if there's like a, a version of this rule book that was written then, I think this is actually news to me 
um, that would be very interesting to see because even if it was written two years ago, then I think probably a lot's changed as well. Yeah, kind of probably. And and it look and it's something that should honestly be changed all the time, but it should be changed before the season started so there's some consistency in rulings. Yeah, for sure. And I, and I, look, I hear your argument. I talked to Draco about this. I get it. Like when you say Idris Alba, Idris Elba, they aren't that different sounding. Um, I believe he knows who the guy in the movie is. I, I believe that. Like, I don't think mm -hmm. that he was saying it and he got lucky. Um, but I do think that, like, as you said, it's an imperfect game and it's very, very hard to come up with the rules that are easy to follow and consistent all the time. There's always going to be something, a break, a break in consistency that we have to come up with on the spot. As yeah. Christian said before on it's, shows. An Im it's an imperfect game. I'm sorry. Yeah. Unless you're typing it into an app and the computer tells you you're wrong, like when you type in your password, like that's... Like that's the only time spelling counts. It truly is. We sat through this meet. It was a long meeting. It was like two and a half hours. And we went through all these rules. And if other rules that were in that meeting are implicated, it means that we're, that's what we're going off of. And everyone was in this meeting. Like as far as like the people that are the ones using it now, that's exactly why Mark basically was able to challenge that, you know, like was able to stay like, that's why it was able to hold up is what I'm saying is because he had that rule. Like that's that's something we put in place a long time ago. And yeah. but I do agree that everyone should know. But like the articles thing, the articles things come up a couple of times. And a versus a that whole thing. Yes. Yeah, well or just not putting the article where the art where someone will leave out the article, you know? Like yeah. thing the thing. Uh if you don't have that article and it it, it is a different movie without that article, because a movie exists without that article, then that's wrong. Yeah, totally. So like when Clark lost to Ethan on South Side with me versus South Side with you, would you have said she was wrong? Yes. Because I mean, if, if, if that movie exists, I don't know. If another movie exists, yeah. you and me are not articles. A, the, like that's different. Right. Me, you, pronouns, different. Yeah. God, you're really testing my my English like skills. <laughs> I'm no, I hope I'm, I'm getting. No I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I'm getting these right. So it just depends if there's another movie, and then it's like, I don't know. That one's yeah. a little harder for me because it's not as simple as a and the. I totally. Yeah, I totally understand that. Like that's I, a pro. I, that's a pronoun. I've heard before Christians say that it should be about the root of the question. Um, what is, you know, what is the assumed answer and does the competitor <laughs> know? Thank you for Miss Movies, Ben. Please pull that comment up. It's so funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, Miss, Miss Movies was in that, was in that meeting also. And she was a part of this discussion in terms of the, a, like this all matters, you know? Yeah. So. So later in this match, after after the tension of round one gets resolved, it continues to go kind of badly for uh, for for the odd couple. They spin first, and they end up hitting opponent's choice. Now Riley and I going in. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just going to interrupt just because someone says Jen's made her point, but it clearly has been ruled the other way several times. Not if I'm in that room. Not if I'm there. If I'm there, and I and I will I will get pretty. And if they don't make the the decision really fast which sometimes they'll just make a decision really fast to like move on. And like, that's not what should be done. I will literally come into the room from the studio where I sit with like Cody Hall and those guys. And I'll tell them like, these are the rules we have in place. Like, don't, don't go against our rules that you physically put in place. But like I said, humans are imperfect beings, you know, until we get, you know, like until baseball, like puts in robot umpires, like we're, we're in the same situation. Right. Not everybody knows the same thing. So jumping here to the second round. My apologies, Ben. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no, no. I, I get it. I mean, like, like I said, I've heard, I've heard both arguments on this. And, and in the end, the only significance that the one point had is that it allowed us to be able to break the record with our five point question. Had he gotten it wrong, we would have won with 33 points or something like or 30, whatever it would have been 32 points, 32, 31. Uh, and it would have been over. So, um, yeah, that's, that's funny. I agree. Totally. I wasn't in there for that meeting. Um, so they hit opponent's choice and Riley and I going into this match kind of had, had strategized, right? Like something behind the curtain that you guys maybe don't know is that if you request slices on the wheel and matches, that information gets used against you in the future, meaning you won't accidentally get those slices in matches. So like, for instance, I'm never going to not request movie release dates 
and just luckily find that it's on the wheel at chance. That's never going to happen because mm -hmm. I've now requested it and made it clear that I like the slice. So when you are trying to choose your slices against people, it's important to remember what does the world know you already know? Because that's the most, if you can control the game with stuff that they're already aware of, then you're not, gave, you're not giving up any kind of advantage. So in this case, our two slices that we put on the wheel end up being the two slices we have we, we use, which is Star Wars, which is what we give them here. We followed up with Pixar. We were pretty sure they were going to tank on Star Wars. It's not a slice that almost ever gets used anymore. It almost, and honestly, it's because there's a Star Wars division that the questions are such deep cuts for the most part. I mean, yeah. granted, this year, obviously, questions reset. So it's a little bit different and it's not, there's not as much disparity in terms of the level of questions, but it's still a difficult, it's still a difficult slice to get. Well, and it almost predates the current rules um, that, that you can no longer request Star Wars to be on the wheel, which is, which is weird. I think I'm right about that. I know Star Wars as a slice that could be on the wheel predated the inner geekdom slices being available on the wheel. It's mm -hmm. an older slice from like way back in the day, way back in the day, but at this time, you could still request an inner geekdom slice. So we put Star Wars and we put Pixar, and they hit, they hit Pixar, they hit Star Wars here on opponent's choice, and you can see what happens. We expected them to just get crushed. That has the choice as the opponent. They get all in their heads. They think they're maybe smarter than they are. They need go for an something. answer here, gents. The other team kills in that category. Okay, uh, and Fence okay. Talk has got it. Uh, 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 Ken, uh, Mark, uh, we're gonna give them. Star Wars. Star Wars. Okay, they're going to give us Star, Star Wars. Wars. Round of applause from the audience, guys. Come on, right. Star Wars. It's exciting, right? I think so, too. Garnering rounds of applause. Right. But Mark and Draco know Star Wars. Star Wars. Uh, we thought we thought he didn't. We thought he was. We thought this was a this was a great choice. And the author. Oh wow! Why did I know that? The question. All right. Wow. Question. Don't forget, you have multiple choice. All three of your JT. He once went zero for eight in a round two in Star Wars. Is the reason we thought. Question. Who directed Rogue One, A Star Wars Story? First of all, that's a great question. <laughs> it's what you know who we're And asking. it's uh, Gareth Edwards. Thank you. That is correct. Who is? There's a couple different answers. Who is credited as directing that movie? It is Gareth Edwards. Right. Question number two. Who portrays Jango Fett in Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones? I think this is a pretty impressive poll, to be honest. Right. I know, I know, Goddard. Probably you'd know this because uh, five. Yeah, you know, Four. you're an IG guy. Laura Morrison. That is correct. Two more points. All right, two more. Points. I know he's the dad in Aquaman, but I still think that's a good poll. Handling the opponent's choice very well. All right, here we go. Third question out of six. How many Tie Fighters are in pursuit of the Millennium Falcon after it escapes the Death Star in? A new hope and this is actually a question from a previous star wars match oh, from like one of the earlier seasons i know i know what you're dun, 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 um, multiple choice all right choices are a three b four c five d six down to multiple choice there and come down the answer they're gonna go for dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, yeah, we might get flagged for that. Um, we're going to go three. Incorrect. Choices are A, three, B, four, C, five, D, six. I confirmed for a one point steal. Four. That's correct. B, four. Right. That's it. One point steal. One point steal. But it's a big I'll tell steal. You what. That's why you give them Star Wars for opponent's choice because, particularly Riley and also Bateman, know yep. Star Wars so well. If the odd couple slip up, Gives them a good chance for a steal. Absolutely. Uh, but look, Odd Couple holding their own here in a category that I think both these guys would say, hey, maybe not necessarily strength, but they're doing good here. Fourth question coming in. Who says fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, and hate leads to suffering? I think that's the easiest question they get, actually. And this ironic, they end up going to multiple choice on this. Yes, you can. I think, I think it's kind of surprising, actually. Five. Four. Multiple choice. A, Obi-Wan Kenobi, B, Qui-Gon Jinn, C, Yoda, D, Mace Windu. Five. Four. Yeah, repeat the options. A, Obi-Wan Kenobi, B, Qui-Gon Jinn, C, Yoda, D, Mace Windu. 
You get one free question repeat there. That's a smart move. Smart move Buy indeed. You a Buy more yourself time. some time. I'm, I'm going to try to zoom in. Five, four, three, two. Yoda? That's correct for a point. That's the Draco literally anchors this category, which is which is crazy considering what I said, Jen, that there's actually evidence of him just right, bombing this once earlier. So either he studied a lot or had horribly bad luck. What? But this is like a key it's, moment. It's a it's a tough category. Yeah, it's a truly like, tough category. Especially for someone that okay, so for instance, for me, Lord of the Rings just wouldn't be my thing because all the names sound the same to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like all the places sound the same to me. Like Grunberg? it it comes to like whether or not you're immersed in that world and I feel like Final he's gone back and really worked hard probably on this category and able to be somewhat they know a little bit about Star Wars more coherent in it. But again, someone pointed out in the comments and it's totally true. Coming in this round here. They don't know a lot of the deeper pulls, which shows that it's more surface level, but sometimes that's all you need in a category to skim by without with, with as long as you can use multiple choice. Yeah. I mean, I th it's astounding that in, in what we thought was their worst category. They come out of this. Yeah. Two? That's correct for two points there. Two points. That is Up good. eight points. I mean, that's that's remarkable. Like, that's a crazy outcome. We we literally expected they were going to come out of this up like two or something, right? Like, they felt like the match was over. Um, and that's just a testament to the strength of those players and, and specifically the strength of Mark Andreco. I mean, that like... And, and speaking of Andreco, it's crazy because his three-pointer was who plays uh, Rose Tico. In right. Last Jedi, and he didn't get it. So I was surprised when that came up. I was I like, know. "Oh, they just crushed Star Wars. He's gonna. It's a layup right here." And That's especially when it's an actor question, which I feel is, you know, Jeff Snyder knows that kind of stuff. Uh, Mark Andreco mm -hmm. knows that kind of stuff. That's like an IMDb type question. Like you maybe you have you've seen the Last Jedi, but you haven't studied it, but you know the cast list. Yeah. So I was very surprised he missed that three, and that could have that could have turned the game right there. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, that that, that would have been a huge moment. I think that that. Did you again, want your Pixar stuff out of this, or are we moving no, no, no. on? That, okay, that's cool. all we need to watch. Cool. Um, I just wanted to show Andreco doing well with it. I think I think that was like every once in a while you get one of those moments, those reminders of why a player is so good. Mm -hmm. And I think Andreco is a guy who obviously has never won in singles as a title, but he's played in a title match and he's won in teams the title. Um, he's a great player. He's come so so close to getting that singles title, and it's just. It's just a matter of time, honestly. Yeah, agreed. I think if he had that opportunity now, he would do better because I feel like his skill set and how to play the game has really grown since he worked with Emma Fife. Like, I feel like she really taught him a lot. And now Roxy has been able to build on that. Yeah, agreed. So we've got two matches left to watch here. Um, we'll watch a little bit of this next match, which is the hottest new name in Inner Geekdom. Somebody you guys are going to see in the tournament going up against somebody who's going to be in the Star Wars tournament. And that is uh, Ace, Andres Ace Cabrera, playing for Swag against Robert Parker from the Dungeon. Now, earlier in the season, uh, Kaiser shocked the world as he already had the he already had Kevin Smets, the Inner Geekdom champion, when he drafted Robert Parker with his first round pick. Very aggressive pick. Very aggressive pull. Pure strategy. Um, and we're going to watch as Ace just, I hate to say it, just literally burns, just goes down in flames here. This is tough to watch. All right. This is what he wants. The here. Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And Goddard, we can we can fast forward sort of through the waiting time between these just to kind of see what Parker does. It's your option. Got it. Five, four, three, two. Multiple choice. I can provide that. Is it A, Warwick Davis? B, oh, I've been in this position aces in before. This position sucks so much. That is incorrect. Robert, I'm going to give you your options, and then you can wager a guess. Is it A, Warwick Davis, B, Peter Dinklage? Look at smile, this kid. D, Vern Troyer. D, Vern Troyer. That is correct for the steal. You know how they say, like, when, you, when it comes to a fight, like, don't pick a guy with a fight that looks like Parker because he – might kick your ass because he like secretly has been taking like Muay Thai. Parker yeah. looks like he knows all these answers. So like he was even more screwed. He looks so far like he's he's not even playing the same game. Like no. in, in this match, he looks like he's not even playing the same game as Ace. He, he, looks, he, like looks, looks, he looks like Pat Mahomes. He looks like Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, if I had to come like you know what I mean? Where Pat Mahomes, every play he makes looks like he's playing on the easiest level of a video game. Like everything is so slow to him. Like the game 
is so slow to him because he has just such good recall. Four, he's got three more. He's just sitting there smiling, just waiting for his turn. That's right. He has three questions left in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Andres, your third question. What is the name of the Weasleys? Old <laughs> right, Miss Movies. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> I hate that when you, you you're down to you've wow. already missed two questions in your category. Multiple you're choice? like, I got to do this. It's not going to work for me, but I have to go multiple choice. I have no idea. C Hermes or D Harold. I'm going to ask you. For the Parker, one. someone said Parker hasn't had his 49ers challenge yet. I feel like Parker's 49ers challenge would likely be Five. Sean Drew. Three. But when you use it, I think. I think he can take him. I think he's less easily rattled than Chandra is. JDM three two who just who just said that in the chat. A arrow. That's not that's not JoJo from Seattle. You look like a guy that I used to know. I just want to make sure that's not you. Based on your your icon. Was destroyed during the events of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Is it a Tom Riddle's mother's ring? B Helga Hufflepuff's cup? C, Tom Riddle's diary. Look at that Which smirk. This kid, he's got it in his bones. Tom Riddle's diary. I don't know what I just said, but he's right. That's one right. point. It's a steal. And that's a steal. Two more in the round. It's, yeah. it's, it's the risky run, Ken. If you select a wedge that maybe your opponent knows is well. Professor Trelawney been teaching at Hogwarts when Dolores... I would say we can we can fast forward now to, to, to just what... Uh, the mysterious and... But that's right. Someone says, don't look over the chosen one. Here's the thing about the chosen one. Okay. And here's, here's my honest opinion. Um, I've watched him both play and I've watched him watch other matches and play along on the sidelines. And the thing that's going to get him in trouble is we talked a little bit about with Ben, Ben, feel free to pull yourself up on this and chime into this conversation because mm -hmm. you were look, Terenger is one that likes to challenge the authority like way too much. <laughs> like he, like I've, I've seen some of the things that he will shout out, not only as an audience member where he's like, challenge it. And I'm like, no, you'll lose that challenge, but feel free to do it, buddy. Um, and he's going to end up burning a bridge. That's going to help him. That's just Wait, how help it him is. Or, uh, Sean, do you help him or hurt him? He's going to end up burning a bridge that would have helped okay. him. Oh, okay, gotcha. I, I was like, like, he's like, cutting off his nose to spite his face. You know what I mean? Essentially, when he, like, does, when he does that. Because he always talks to people like he's smarter than them. And when you talk to people that decide, like, your fate when it comes to challenges and things like that, it's not going to go your way. Like, it's just dumb. Like, Well, especially, like, and I... I'm the last person to talk about face or heel, but a lot of things that like, especially when I think he got a question is like, what kind, what is the name of the cat in captain Marvel? And it's like, Oh, his name is goose. But he, and like, he'll literally say, he's not a cat. He's a flirkin. And his name is goose. I was like, no, you're, what are you doing? Like, no one needs that right now. <laughs> you know who he is? He's that, he's that guy that always starts a tweet with, well, actually. <laughs> right. He's a, he's Oscar no from the office. No one likes that guy. <laughs> no one likes that guy at all. So it's like, you're already starting off on the wrong foot. And I've had to, I've had to speak to him, like, not with a microphone, like kind of off to the side. And then I had to remind him in the middle of a promo, that's not how you're supposed to talk. Let's let your mouthpiece talk for you if you can't keep it straight. Um, and so, oh yeah, <laughs> is he the next one to get to get a shake? Oh, he needs baby face glass. God, the chat, you guys are lighting it up in the chat. Thank you so much for this. Honestly, um, well, I mean, you straight up call them out. Yeah, you called him out in the interviews like, and someone needs a lesson on how to talk like a face. And then you turned like you just turned away from him to go to Winston. <laughs> and that was that was literally just like it wasn't insulting. It wasn't over. It was so perfect. And it was just like because he like I that was when Brandon was on my team. And I still care about Brandon as a person as well. Like, like Shmodown is one thing, like personal relationships are more important. And yeah. Brandon was devastated and he wanted that so bad. And he took it on short notice and he knew this was a big match. And so 
Like he had, he already won, man. You don't need to kick him while you, like it wasn't even like kicking him yeah. while I'm down. He curb stomped the poor kid while he was injured in the gutter, and it was just like what what is, what point is that? Like you want you've TKO'd him twice in a row. You've established that you right now are a better player than him. Like mm-hmm. it, this this is outside the realm, and like I remember a lot of people were not happy with Sean Drew in the studio, and it was just like there there's a limit. And especially when he's, it's one thing, you know, you could talk a little smack, you know, like, oh, you know, cause Brandon is always on Twitter talking smack and that's his character and stuff. And he's great at it. But then, you know, take, take a breath, take a breath, realize in that moment that one, you're a face and like, you can absolutely <laughs> celebrate this big, big win that ended up getting you a title shot. Mm-hmm. But like the stuff he said, and even he said some stuff during Brandon's interview that didn't get picked up in a mic. And I was like, dude, what are you doing? Like, mm-hmm. stop. Yeah, exactly. He says stuff that fans aren't privy to. So when I come hard at somebody in terms of like knock that behavior off, people are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And they want to jump to his defense. And it's like, slow down. I feel like if I've proved anything on being able to do these shows with you guys, it's that I kind of see everything. And I don't pull any punches in terms of like, I, I try to play it as straight and down the middle as humanly possible and be unbiased. Uh, I'm everybody's friend, but I'm also going to be the person that calls you out because I'm not the friend that enables you. If your behavior is terrible, I call you out on it. Um, And like I said, I think that Parker would easily defeat Chandru because I feel like that well actually is going to eventually bite him in the ass and it's going to have to make him rethink how he plays his game. So I do have I mean, to ask, because even even someone, because I played Parker in the Lord of the Rings exhibition match, and no spoilers, but the kid is great. And so y'all are all on, like, after one match, you guys are all on the Robert Parker train. Like, full full steam ahead. He looks good. I mean, he, he went perfect. Right? Yeah. Like, he, he de- debut perfect match after that kind of hype. It's hard to not buy in. True. Absolutely. Kid, kids, kids, the real deal. And, uh, like, he also knows magic, too. He's really good at, like, street yeah, magic, and it's very Sweet. impressive. It's awesome. But yeah, we'll get back to the match. Uh, well, actually, I, I was going to say, actually, so so I think because we've already kind of talked about it at length now, he, he does really well in Lord of the Rings. He gets a bunch of tough questions, mm-hmm. and the same way that he steals all of all of uh, mm-hmm. Ace's points, he aces Most. the round, goes on. Uh, it's impressive. Chaos, knockout, and that does not happen much anymore. No, he crushes him. And so what I want to do is if there's any Streamlabs or Super Chats, sorry, just Super Chats, Streamlabs to, to read, um, let's read those, and then there's We're one good. last watch we're gonna go yeah we'll get uh straight into the zipper uh stacy if you guys want to send in a few more there's the link right there get some questions in for uh jessica and ben <laughs> and then uh we'll get into cool actor provides the voice of king rothgar in robert zemeckis's beowulf well wait, wait, wait goddard back up one one second back up to the question before this because this is just the five. I want to see the three. Yeah, like it was the that was it was the entire third round. Honestly, is where Stacy really lit up. Yeah, it picks up here because this is Zipper. Just paroled Army Ranger Cameron Poe. Yeah, who must fly home aboard a prison transport in the film On Air. It's a pretty easy question, right? Everybody knows that. Two points, and he's back on top. Which we need a Nicolas Cage wheel slice, right? Everybody agrees with me? I do agree with I you. do agree with that, actually. I think it'd be freaking sweet. Wheel slice, we pivot back to Stacy for her three point question. She selected number 12. Brianne, what's she looking at? I'm so excited that you selected comedy. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that was a little, that was a little delayed there. A little delayed there. Okay, here we go. Who wrote Home Alone, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation? and the 1994 remake of Miracle on 34th Street. Now, I was standing here 10 feet away from her, and I had just mm-hmm. I had just done my research on this guy. So this when they said it, I was like, oh, that's a that's a good pull, actually. That's that's not that easy of a pull. Um, and I looked at her, and I was like, she, does, she doesn't have this. Four. I didn't think. I thought based on her face. Who wrote Home Alone? But this National is why Stacey's so good. Vacation and the 1994 remake of Miracle on 34th Street. His name's right here. It's right here. I know it. Eric Zipper has all of his dreams. Okay. Um, uh, John Hughes? 
That is correct. I love the explosion from the audience. There it is. It's a good pull. That's a that's a tough three point pull. I gotta say. But if you've been watching stuff like the movies that made us, like that's in there. You know what yeah. I mean? So yep. it. it <laughs> They also just put John Hughes on the wheel. So you know that's somebody you should be aware of now. Uh, you chose number two. Ben coming in with that champion knowledge. And that corresponds to the world of crime movie. Your question. Who directed the 2018 crime thriller Widows? Steve McQueen. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point question, too. Hard enough. Playing direct, it's not Eric Zipper back on top, and it is a seesaw battle back and forth. This is exciting. This is why you watch the movie Trivia Spowdown right here, folks. So we go back to Stacey Hart for her five point question. Uh, she selected uh, the number one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, Joe right. Montana, and that corresponds to what, Brianne? To fantasy science fiction. Yeah. I don't know how we feel about that up there. <laughs> When we talked about Oyama getting his confidence clipped earlier, we talk go. about that times what 10 at this moment winning for actor provides the voice of King Rothgar in Robert Zemeckis' Beowulf. Five. Four. Repeat the question. Is this is the last one. Now, Jen, when you were watching this, did you think she? You, did you think there was any chance here? You thought it was over. The voice of King. No, I remember I was prepping for interviews in the yeah. back, and I was just sitting there, like telepathically, trying to send her the answer, because I was sitting next to Andrea. Go. One more. You can hear him audibly gasp too when she gets it. Let's see. Repeat the question. What Oscar-winning actor provides the voice of King Rothgar in Robert Zemeckis's Beowulf? This is Killer Instinct, Stacey. This is the one we've seen beat Ellis. She we looks saw beat so Riley. focused. She looks yeah. like she just came from a brunch where she was hungover. What are you talking about? Five. Four. Anthony Hopkins? Yeah. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I cannot stop it. How do you do that? How do you do that? <laughs> It's a celebratory <laughs> mood here. <laughs> How do you do I that? Not stone face wow. at that time, Mark. Uh, the audience was so excited. It, what a what a great moment! And we're not even done with the match. Okay, people are asking yes, the chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except she has it yet. But she could. The she problem could is, could. I only what know what I what? know, and she knows what she doesn't know. <laughs> fair. That's fair. All right, so Stacy, improbably it. pulling it. <laughs> you know, a, a lot of times you get competitors up here and they like milking it and use other chains. We can kill it. It's just, it's just a sad ending now for for Zipper. Unfortunately, he gets a tough he gets a tough five pointer. It's not so much that the uh, the question itself is hard. It's just Moscow and the Hudson is not really a movie that comes up much these days. I think it might be the first time it was ever asked about in the Schmodown. And yes, Miss um, Movies, I did say it's all in the tan because she had just gotten a, a fake tan that day. And I was like, why? Stacy is so tan. I thought it was because she got back from she just got back from the beach or a vacation or something. But yeah, I was like, it's all in the tan. <laughs> really loud. Amazing. Um, so, yeah, I think that's the last that's the last aired match, Jen. That was what we just that was what we just watched this last week. Yeah. We now have this tournament coming up, an inner geekdom tournament. We've got a Star Wars tournament here on Twitch, exclusive to Twitch. All those exhibition matches, they're up on patreon.com slash the schmodown. Be sure to sign up at the $10 tier. Gets you access to literally every single live stream, all of the cool extra stuff, every exhibition match. Um, it's the best way to be a part of it. Um, where can the folks find you if they want to follow along with what you're doing? Oh, well, you can find me Twitter, Instagram, all that jazz, at Jennifer Sturger. I'm also doing stuff right now for All Elite Wrestling. Um, so if you want to help a girl out, you could always go to their YouTube, give me some thumbs up and stuff. And um some nice comments in the chat, not F's in the chat though. Um, <laughs> I'm actually going over to my studio right now that I've built to film like my road Two episodes. So that's going to come out on Monday. So Mondays and Fridays, you can catch my work for uh, AEW. I really can't wait to get back working with the Schmodown and doing more stuff with that. Uh, Brad Gilmore and I are going to host a preview for the upcoming star Wars tournament. I'm hoping I can get you guys a really cool guest to have on that show. Um, I'll let you guys figure out who that's going to be. They are very passionate about Star Wars. 
they might have a pay-per-view coming up that they might want to promote. So I hope that it's a good match <laughs> made and you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but we'll see. Uh, this has been a lot of fun, Ben. I've really enjoyed, uh, you know, sharing all of our, our knowledge with yeah. each other. And um, it's been really fun looking back. It just makes me miss. It honestly just makes me miss the Schmodown even more though. Oh yeah. Goddard has one last thing to show, to show you guys here um, to pull up just for us to talk about. Cause there's something we didn't get to watch. Uh, or at least he, he just texted me and I think it's worth watching. This was, this was a key, key moment. I mean, talk about a villain. Look at that face. It's like, there's nothing that I can think of that's more heelish than that, Jen. I Like, if I was playing against that guy, I would want to... The only thing that's more heelish is the fact that Goddard made me watch that. <laughs> How um, dare you guys? Oh, the floss needs to be retired. The floss, the stupid Fortnite dance, whatever the hell you kids call that, because I'm old and I don't know that type of stuff. That needs to go away. Um, all of this. All of this. Oh, my God. Um, well, the last I thing hate everything about with, this before F's, we, in the, F's in the chat for that dance. It needs to go away. Oh, it's so good. Before, before we get out of here, guys. So on Tuesday for Shmodan backstage, I will not be there. You're going to have a special guest host in Winston Marshall with Roca. They're bringing on a huge, huge cast. There's like four or five different guests. I think you're going to hear from Brandon Hanna. You're going to hear from Andraco. Sam Levine's back on the show. It's going to be great. Um, you guys are going to hear about that on Tuesday. Go check out youtube.com slash nerds in suits it's a brand new thing i'm doing i just did an interview with john roca that posted yesterday check out action industries on youtube as well um andrew guy and i do weekly shows we've got ethan Irwin, janine the machine come on tomorrow night on the action guys but uh thank you all so much for tuning in hit that subscribe button uh actually hit the follow button because we're on twitch and uh check out everything that we're doing on schmodown over on youtube and uh you guys are the best jen thanks for hanging out no problem we should do this again sometime yeah looking forward to it yeah next time next time we can do that